everybody. Today's project we're going to need 14 gauge copper wire and 26 gauge. We're also going to be needing 22 gauge but I forgot to put that here. I have a prism of crystals and we're going to be making a rainbow spiral sun catcher. You will also need your hammer and your tools. I'm going to start by cutting about 12 inches of the 14 gauge wire. This is going to be our main base of our sun catcher and I'm going to shape that into a spiral and then hammer it later. These pliers are called bale making pliers. This is the 4 and 6 millimeter size, but I have another that is also 6 and 8 millimeter. I really like these. I think I got them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but it was a craft store. To get your perfect round shape, you can use anything in your house, like a cup or a can. I'm going to use this spray can because it's the perfect size. I like it. And I'm just going to wrap the wire around there and take it off. Now just carefully shape your spiral until you're happy with it. This sun catcher here that we're making today is perfect for beginners. It's just going to teach you all of the basics about handling it and the size and shape and wrapping and the crystals and, and it's, it's really easy but it's also a lot of fun and versatile. You guys can change up the crystal colors or the shapes or the spacing. You can really make it your own. Now we're going to go hammer this base that we have. I chose to hammer on my counter because it's a solid space and so I don't get any of the vibration or anything like that. Um, if you notice, I am hammering in an outward direction. That way it helps to create an even curve and it helps to pull the spiral into shape, really. When I was done with this, I noticed that the middle was a little sharp, so I went and I got my file and I did file it just into a roundness. It doesn't have to be smooth because it's not going on anybody's skin. And this is your spiral base, ready for wrapping. Now before I wrap, I do like to place out my crystals and get an idea of where everything is going to be situated. It may not seem necessary, but it really gives me an idea of how everything is going to work together and fit together. And in this case, it actually saved me some time later, a lot of trouble, because I found out that I needed to give myself more space between my crystals. You'll see here pretty quickly that my colors all pushed together leave me a few inches short. So I ended up giving them just about 8 to 10 wraps between the crystals and spacing them out and that solved all of my problems. Once you have your design all planned, now we are ready to get started with wrapping. I started by cutting three feet of 26 gauge wire and I'm going to start my wrapping in the center of the spiral to make sure that I have the correct amount of spacing for the outside. I just started with three or four wraps just to uh, set the wire and get it started. Once your wrap is nice and tight, you are ready to add your first crystal. Now 
Um, like I said before, I added about 8 to 10 wraps in between the crystals, just depending on the size of the crystal and the spacing and all that stuff. And uh, these inner wraps were a little weird, just the way the wires were spiraled. It, uh, it prevented me from wrapping nice and evenly, but uh, the outer wraps got a lot easier. I went ahead and recorded me wrapping and adding some wires and wrapping and adding some wires for the first few crystals just to show everybody the basic process of it. But feel free to skip ahead to 7 minutes and 56 seconds and you can see where I add more wire to the spiral and the rest of the crystals. Here you can see I only have a few more inches of wire left, maybe two, so I cut three more feet of 26 gauge and I'm going to show you how I blend the two wires together. I'm going to use this last little tail to make four or five wraps and then I'm going to cut off the excess and trim it down nice and tight. Here I nudge the tail up a little bit with my finger, that way it's easier for me to get my cutters in there to make it nice and close. When you add your next wire, make sure that you are making it go in the same direction as the previous wire. Just like the last one, just make four or five wraps. I'm going to make them as tight and close as I can. Now that I have the amount of space that I want, I'm going to trim off the little excess tail back here and pinch it down nice and tight. If you have to, squeeze the wraps together just to make them look nice and flush to each other. And now it's time to continue your wrapping and adding crystals. Now that we've finished with our crystal spiral, I'm just ending the wire here. I'm going to adjust the spiral just a little bit to make it the right shape that I want it to. And we're going to add a little heart dangle here at the top. 
I'm going to use the excess 28 gauge wire left over from our spiral um, to wrap the little heart and give it a little loop at the top to dangle from. Use your round nose pliers to create the loop at the top and make yours a little bit bigger than I am making mine because I actually didn't make it big enough so then I had to stretch it off screen so that it would be the right size. I'm sorry my camera went out of focus. I know it's really annoying. Now is when I applied the dangle and when I'm done I wanted to close this loop here at the top. So I'm going to be using my bail making pliers and just gently putting pressure on that until it closes. I ended up also having to use my chain nose pliers, but I think that these bail making pliers did a better job. So I went back in later with the bail making pliers again to tighten it up a little bit more. And now it's time to add the bottom dangle. I cut about 5 inches of this 22 gauge. It's a little stiffer so I like it better for holding the bottom and the top. We're just making a wrapped loop like normal, but this crystal had a really large top, so I had to bend the wires around it to make sure that it had plenty of room to move around. Now I'm adding the little teardrop bead and then I'm going to bend it outward and make a loop to hang it on the bottom. I ended up using the bail making pliers, the small side, because I thought that that was the perfect setting for the loop to be on to be able to fit around the 14 gauge but also have plenty of room for movement. hold the loop with my chain nose pliers and then just twist the wire back upon itself with my fingers. Um, you could also use another pair of chain nose pliers if you need it, um, but that's it and then your bottom dangle is done.
I cut another 4 to 5 inches of 22 gauge wire for the top and I started by making a big loop with the 6 millimeter side of my bail making pliers and I'm just going to make that into a wrapped loop and I am going to hammer that giant loop and that is what we're going to hang our sun catcher from in the window. You can see it's all hammered now and I'm just going to add my beads making sure that you have the top and bottom the way that you want them to and I'm just going to make another little wrapped loop on the bottom of this so that I can hang it on or rather hang the sun catcher from it. Make sure that you do make this bottom loop large enough that the 14 gauge will fit. And since I'd already closed the loop on the spiral, I ended up having to open this up and just slip it on through there and wrap the loop around like this. I hope I'm not rambling and that that actually made sense for you guys. And this is the last step. And once it's pinched down and nice and tight, it's done and you guys can hang it up in the window and enjoy all of your hard work. This particular sun catcher I actually made as a gift for a friend of mine. She is recently moving into a new house and she could use a little good luck right now so I'm hoping that this will help to add a little bit of zen and beauty to her home. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can create off of my tutorial and I will see you next weekend.